I look Asian today, I guess. But um, I did talk about communication in my last one. I thought I'd show you some fun pictures from the Stone Ages. Here's a bitmap picture of an avatar that I created. And they also have South Park and Simpsons avatars. So people log on and in these communities they can talk to each other as whoever they want to look like. And I guess I'm too much of a traditionalist. I usually keep to more what I look like, but I'm a sucker for wings. And this one has a little robot. I just thought he was pretty cool. You pick from a bunch of different features. You have to pay for the extra features. This one is me all badass and pissed off. It's a good one. Of course, my second life character. You've seen that one. This is my IMVU character. Um, I like the little spidery outfit. And uh, I don't know about the pink dragon. It was one of those freebies. And this is a Mii's character. So you can uh, pick backgrounds and you can animate them just like in Second Life. So the potential of virtual worlds, as I've said before, is to use them as a, as a teaching ground. Um, I found a YouTube video about a um, person who, I don't know, he got an award for his concern about how much people know about us, from these uh, supermarket club cards to um, j just people keeping track of what we buy, kind of thing. I mean, even Amazon does it. He said that indifference is only appropriate for those who think that efficiency, convenience, and speed qualify as values to be placed over openness and fairness. So we really trust the people that have all this data and um, they really aren't held to, I mean they, they are held to rules, laws and regulations about how to use it, but I don't know. Some people worry about that kind of stuff. I just go about living my life. I don't know if I value efficiency, convenience, and speed over <laughs> security. Um, certainly when it comes to my family, I want to protect them. I'm getting bigger. Look at me inside. Do I look different from you? I also watch ten some TED Talks. Those always inspire me about the future. You know, I make wild claims that we're going to solve all the problems, but what proof do I have? Well, Clifford Stoll was a really fun one to watch. He had so much energy. He was literally pacing and bouncing around, and his notes were written on his hand. He says, All truth is one. In this light, may science and religion labor together for the steady evolution of mankind from darkness to light from prejudice to tolerance, from narrowest to broad-mindedness. Yeah. Uh, I've taken notes. I favorited a video about a voiceless communicator. Um, I think all of that is kind of eclipsed by the politics of the day and uh, what's going on in China. I mean, that's pretty interesting. They can't, they're trying to get the torch to where it's supposed to go, but, y you know, there was a poll question where if you predict the correct answer, you get money for it, and it said which um, country will be the first to announce its boycott of China, and I don't think that's the correct uh, question. I think um, how many protests are there going to be? because we're not oriented towards countries anymore, it's more um, cities, and city mentality is, um, well, they protest. So as the torch moves through, I expect there to be larger and smaller protesting of China's policies. I mean, it's important that we speak out against what they've been doing. I don't know if it'll make much difference. You can develop empathy by uh, meditation. It's actually like a muscle that you can flex, so I think it should be required in all prisons, but I don't think it's something you can force on people. <laughs> uh, okay, so water, 
Um, the three major areas will be critical for the hydrological future, desalinization of seawater or brackish groundwater, purification of water containing chemical or biological contaminants, and the conservation to cut demand. One of the things that Australia has done and uh, one of the buildings in Beijing for the Olympics is to catch uh, falling rainwater and Australia predicts that that alone will alleviate much of their drought issues just by capturing what's falling in their own backyard. So never underestimate, a little goes a long way. Um, they've also got smart water technologies where um, you ever see those sprinklers come on in the middle of a rainstorm? You're like, come on! I mean, it's such a waste. So now they have sprinklers that can sense their surroundings and they won't water unless they need to. So even that little bit, it says that um, it's been tested in California, Washington, and several states. Uh, it decreased by an average of 26% with some consumers cutting their usage by as much as 59%. Uh, technology, you got nano water filtration and it's not some out there thing that they don't have yet. They're, they're using it in Beijing. Um, it, like I talked about, they're collecting the rainwater, they're also purifying it that way. This idea, some people have called it crowdsourcing, if you've heard about it. Um, basically, the, the X Prize, there's uh, the Virgin Earth Challenge, demonstrate a commercially viable design which results in the removal of greenhouse gases. You need to contribute materially to the sustainability of Earth's climate and you will win $25 million. So kind of like the X Prize, if you get um, something on the moon, you get so many million dollars. This is humanitarian X Prizes, and it's worked for Design Like You Give a Damn. He would present design challenges to architecture students, and the ones that would win would be presented in Africa to the people, and they would choose which design worked for them which is great, but they'd have all these different options. There's a new city in 40 miles south of Seoul, South Korea, that's supposed to be a ubiquitous city where your house key can unlock your front door but pay for the subway, you can go to movies, borrow a public bicycle, um, that kind of thing. I, I don't know, talk about surveillance. They would know where you're moving around. I believe I saw a Star Trek episode with it. They, they wore their badges or whatever, and if you lost yours, um, you might get thrown in with all of the other um, bums, essentially. Anyway, it wasn't, wasn't a good thing, but it's already being created in Seoul, and it's supposed to be up by 2014. Mm -hmm. I, I want you all to know that the world is getting better because we're figuring out solutions um, to everyday problems, okay? In Africa, they need refrigerators to preserve food. So you take a small pot and you put it inside a larger pot. Then you fill the space in between them all around with wet sand. And then you cover the top with a wet cloth. When the water evaporates, it pulls the heat out with it, making the inside of the little pot um, cold. So it's natural, it's cheap, and it's an easy to make refrigerator. The fact that we've finally done it, um, it's one small step. So I think between that and uh, offering large monetary prizes, uh, Selfport did a wonderful video that I also favorited about um, entrepreneurs, billionaires actually becoming socially conscious. And um, it's to their benefit, you know, they're not totally doing it just to be generous because people see their, um, their ways and are more likely to support their company. So giving is the new advertising, I would say, and um, it's very encouraging. And actors and, and stuff like that have been doing that for a long time, musicians. So there, I think there's hope. There's definitely money out there coming from sources. There's creative people, and they're all collaborating with their <laughs> little avatars. I know, I know, but they really do do serious things in Second Life. You know, it's, it's a small fraction of what's going on in Second Life, but it's important nonetheless, and uh, we aren't confined by what we look like anymore. We can, we can design that to be whatever 
Simpsonized style you want. So, have hope.